Good evening, people. How are we getting on there on this uh, whatever day of the week it is? Uh, look, I want to make this video just to talk specifically to the lads that's running their own business, right? Small operators, tradesmen, carpenters, plasters, plumbers, whatever else, right? And they're absolutely flat out, busting their nut. But the problem is they don't ever have enough money left over at the end of the month. What does it say? There's too much month left over at the end of the money, right? That's what you say. Too much month left over at the end of the money, right? So here's, like, it's a simple little thing, right? That it doesn't affect the money at all whatsoever. It just affects how you spend the money, right? And the problem that you have is the uncertainty associated with not being able to spend the money. Sorry, the, 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 uncert the problem you have is the uncertainty associated with what you're going to have to pay next and you don't know where you stand. What did you pay out for here and there, right? But in its simplest forms, right, in its absolute simplest forms, you have two types of payment that leave the business, right? The first one is the payment that's actually, here's one here, right? We we'll, we'll look, we we'll take someone here as an example, right? So a few people, there's there's a lad at the dropping in there, he's a plasterer, right? So let's say you're running a plastering business or you're running a carpet business or you're running a handyman business or you're running a water filter business or a power housing business or a refrigeration business anything right makes no difference all these people have these business that's watching here right you have two types of payments that you pay out right you have one payment which is a direct cost for doing the job right and then the other payment is the overhead for running the business right so we give an example let's say we're using the plastering there as a the plastering company as a business right Let's say you do a job and let's say it's 10 grand, right? And you're going to make two grand profit after everybody is said, everything's said and done, everything, everybody's paid, right? 10 grand for the plastering job, you're charging the client 10 grand for the plastering job, you know what's going to cost you 8,000 euro, including all your wages and all the materials, right? And then you put that two grand aside and then that goes in to pay your rent in your office, we'll assume you have an office and you might have a girl that answers the phone and you're gonna have insurance and you're gonna have bits and pieces and all that sort of stuff, right? So you have two costs. You have the direct costs of actually doing the job and you have the second cost, which is the overhead associated with running the business. Does that make sense? Let me know in the comments if that makes sense to you there, right? So what happens is you go in and you price the job and you know, I can do that job for eight grand, I'm gonna charge them 10. You know straight away, right? I get, that's grand, right? And you always make money on that part of the job. You always make money. So if you charge 10, if it doesn't come in at 8, it comes in at 8, 2, 8, 3, 7, 8, 7, 9. You always make money, right? And then you take the profit and you bring it over here, right? But the problem is that's where there's no money left. Because let's just say we'll, we'll use this example of the plastering company. Let's say there's two plasters, two laborers. And one girl in, the, in an office, just to give an example here, right, of the, the layout of the company I'm talking about. And most people have it, they have maybe one, two, three employees and then one office worker or something like that, right? So what happens is you're buying the materials for the job as you need them. The client gives you the, eight, the 10 grand or they give you five grand of the 10 grand or whatever they give you. And it goes into the bank account and straight away you start buying your materials out of that, right? That's fine. That's no problem. You will really run over on that end of things, right? Where you will go wrong is you will start spending money elsewhere in the company. Now, this is money that's going to have to be spent. And unfortunately, there's nothing you're going to be able to do about it. You're going to have to spend it, right? But I want you to spend it in a certain type of way, right? The money that you spend on the job, the direct cost of doing the job, you spend that as you go because you have to spend it because you can't go down and finish. You simply can't go down and finish the plastering job unless you have the plaster, right? So it can't be done. So you have to spend that as you go or else even if you're on an account there, you spend, right? All the other stuff such as your van insurance, your office insurance, uh, your advertising, your tools, your extra different bits and pieces, everything else that gets paid but gets paid from so that, that's not a direct cost of one single job right tools van van insurance clutch going in the van uh what would you say there uh wages for the people in the office rent in the office um advertising workwear every single thing every cent that you spend in your business that is not directly linked to the actual job right that's an overhead right you make all them payments on one day, right? So let's just picture this one particular business. <laughs> it's 
going to be in business for one month, right? They do all their work, their, their classroom work. They do all these 10 grand jobs. It costs them eight grand and they stack all these two grands up here, right? So they stack five, six, seven, eight of these two grand profits. They, they leave them in their bank account, right? They don't pay any of the bills out for running the office, even though people are looking for them to pay them. They don't pay, right? And what happens then is they go in and do their once a month meeting. I hope you do once a month meetings, right? They do their once a month meeting with their office, with their accountant, with their bookkeeper, whoever it happens to be, right? And the bookkeeper says, we have 10 grand in the bank. However, we have bills here of 10 grand, right? And then you look at the bills of 10 grand and you say, you know what? I'm not paying that one this month. Um, and you pay seven grand of those bills and you keep three grand, right? Now, of course, you still need to pay the money. It's all due, right? But that's not the way people... So what happens is you go in on the first of the month, you have... Your money in the bank account, that's the profit left over from the jobs, and you have the bills stacked up here of all these different things to have to pay, right? So you're now in control. I have my money, but yet I have the bills, and I know I have to pay them, right? You simply pay them, you decide who to pay, when to pay, who not to pay, right? And you pay them. And then you leave your office knowing, well, I've no money left in the bank, but I've paid all my bills, right? Now, if you do that, that's going to give you a good sense of empowerment because you are holding on tightly to all of these, you're holding on tightly to the control of the money in your company at all times, right? Now, let's just say, for example, it's 12 grand. You owe out 12 grand, but you've only 10 grand in the bank. That's fine. It's all there. You just, so you might have to leave three or four people short of two, three, four, five hundred quid each. You ring them, hey, listen, you're two grand billion. I'm sending you out 1,600. I'll, I'll catch you up next month, right? Then, when you go into day one of month two, you still continue to pay your materials for the jobs as they go on. But you know, and you tell the office, and you tell yourself, there will be zero money spent this month on additional in the indirect expenses because we ran over last month. I still have a two grand bill here and I need to clear that. That might sound quite simple, but what happens is the opposite. People spend the money, the direct money on the job all the time. Bum, 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 bum. They spend it all the time. Something breaks, they spend it. They want to buy something, they spend it. They just keep spending the money and all of a sudden they get a phone call from their accounts person <clears throat> or they go to take money, they go to charge the card, take money out of the ATM, write a check and there's no money there. And the reason why there's no money there is because they lost track of the spending. So it's quite simple, guys. You break it down. Let me know if this makes sense here, right? You break all your spending down into two groups. Direct spending and indirect spending or direct cost and indirect cost, which is the same as overhead, right? So for example, we're using the, we're using the plasters here. The direct cost is the plaster. He has to get paid every week, every day, every week, whatever, right? If he doesn't come in, he doesn't get paid, right? The girl in the office, will use her, we'll assume she's a girl in the office. She is an overhead and an indirect cost. So she should not get paid every week. She should get paid once a month while you're doing that. While you're starting off, right? I know people don't like getting paid in the month. They like to get paid per week. But while you're starting off, you pay them at the end of the month. And when you go in and you're paying your overhead for the month, the very first person you pay is your staff. Basically, you pay your staff, then you pay your phone bill, then you pay your electric, and then after that, then it's priority, you know? But I guarantee you 100%, guys, there's so many people that I'm talking to, right? And I, I ring them up and I kind of ask them these questions just to kind of catch them out a little bit or make them think. It's like, how's things? You're busy? Ah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, is there a, are you getting decent rates for the job? Oh, yeah, 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 that's grand. But are you making any money? Oh, well, uh, and that's when it kind of trails off then, right? And the reason for that is they just allow the... Listen, I'll tell you how I know what this happens. Because I am an absolute nuisance for it. It happens all the time. Oh, jeez, there's money in the bank. Boom. And I just run them up spending it on stuff. But for me, where I always end up spending it is on further expansion. So I drink the office. I'm like, how are we getting on there? What's in the account there this month? Where are we at? And they're like, yeah, yeah, we're grand. And all of a sudden, I'll go out and I'll buy a house that I'll be at the borrowing the money to 
buy the house, but I'll need a refurb, I'll need 20 grand spent, 30 grand spent, whatever. And I'm just like, ah, yeah, go ahead and do it. And then the, op the office will be like, Joe, you can't keep doing this. And in my head, I'm like, yeah, yeah, it's grand. It's, it's expansion. Keep pushing for expansion all the time. But I had to get a good handle on it then because I'll be coming in, I'm like, right, where's the money? And they're like, well, we took all the money in, but you spent it there. I'm like, oh, sweet Jesus. So now I don't do that. I don't pay any money. I, I collect all my money in throughout the month. And I don't pay any uh, thing out until one day in the month. So even there, what's prompted me to uh, to say this now is that um, I've got my report of money that has to be paid out this month, and I'm looking at it, and I'm already gone over two grand. And it's like, what are we? I didn't even have any major work going on this month, but I'm already gone over it. You know, I didn't have any unexpected work, but I'm going in there now to make them bills, to pay them bills, but I'm paying them from the point of view of I have the money. I have the bills, I'm deciding who's paying, rather than just getting spending as you go, in which case then you're never comfortable at it, you know? But guys, tell me this, um, who watching this video has their own business? If you're watching this video and you have your own business, press a number one in the comments. And actually, if you're watching the video and you don't have your own business, press a number zero in the comments, right? But I guarantee you 100%, everybody that's watching this video that has their own business can relate to the fact that, yeah, the money comes in, but when everything's paid, it's just like, Oh, there's nothing left. Do you know what I'm saying? And it's very soul destroying, right? It wrecks people's head because they don't know where to stand. And rather than pay as you go, pay at the end. Take control over that. And I guarantee you, it will be the best thing you ever done. Because what happens is it removes the uncertainty. You're not concerned then about is the money in the bank. So, for example, um, where, what way does it work with ourselves there? We tell, I'm, not, yeah, I'm not telling you the numbers, right? But basically... Um, we have a set amount of money comes in every single month, right? <clears throat> Within reason, right? And we have a set amount of money. Goes so our money goes out in basically three parts, right? We have the regular monthly amount, which is for mortgages. Then we have our maintenance, which has to be paid because the house will break down. Um, and then the third one we have is discretionary or development, right? So what happens is we take all our money in, we pay out our, our fixed monthly payments, Every single month they go out, bump, bump, bump. They just go out before I even see them, right? Um, they're all set. Then the next one is our maintenance. Our maintenance is set at a certain limit. And then after that, then we have our our development, which is development of the portfolio, pushing for buying more properties and discretionary. So discretionary could be for me, like say, uh, I could want to go and buy a course or something like that, or I could want to go and hear someone speak or go something like that. So discretionary means it's not getting paid for sure. So once we pay all our fixed costs, once we keep our maintenance in check, if there's enough money left over, we pay our discretionary. If our maintenance runs over, it then removes the possibility of me paying any discretionary. So where would that relate into the business of the plaster, for example? Uh, the money comes in, um, he should be paying, who would you say, he'd pay his staff, he'd pay his suppliers, that's his regular fixed cost because it's on the job. Then after that then, um, he would have, as we said, his office staff, his electricity, his phone bill, um, but he might want to buy a new van or he might want to buy a big tower of scaffold that's a couple of grand or he might want to buy this or that. And that's all development stuff, right? So that only gets paid for later on when the other two categories of payments are paid, if that makes sense, you know? But guys, look, I'll just leave that with you. Hopefully that makes sense. Yeah, that's a little bit how I manage my cash flow. It wasn't always, a, I didn't always have a good handle on it. Um, and to be honest, the minute I take my eye off it, it just flies up again. So I need to be very, very careful on it. Um, but don't ever be, don't be logging into your bank afraid to look at it because you're like, oh, this. be logging into your bank knowing all the money's there, but knowing you have to pay it out. It's just, it's a, it's a psychologically, it's a different thing. I guarantee you, if that happens, um, you'd be, you'd be, it's just, it just gives you control, right? It just takes away that, like, for example, you'd be speaking to people and they're like, oh, I'm waiting on a check to come in. Okay, no problem. Um, but these guys, and that's fine, people say I'm waiting on checks to come in, but these guys are literally waiting on a check to come in and they've paid everybody and if the check doesn't come in, they're snookered. Do you know what I'm saying? And they can't go on. They're, they're down to the last drop of diesel, you know? So you need to put a nice little tight system in place for managing your cash flow and the simplest way out of it is pay everything one day in the month simple as that you know pay everything one day in the month and you can keep a nice handle on it then you know so guys listen i'm gonna let you go thank you for watching as i said if um 
if you have your own business, press the number one in the comments. And if you don't have your own business, press the number zero. Let's let's uh, let's get to know the people that's watching these videos. And if you want to do a little share, I'll be forever grateful. Okay, stay cool, people. Thank you for watching. Have a good evening.